Hi everyone, we are still talking about charka, and uh, that's not a bad thing to do. It deserves this kind of emphasis, because if we could understand the brilliance of what it was, what it did, what it represented, uh, we would really have a handle on how, so how we can move things forward in our own situation, and I'm, I'm going to talk about that uh, in a little while. But I mentioned the fact that uh, charka was very real, with symbolic resonance, and that's kind of the ideal. Uh, on pages 170, 171, we talk about the other reasons why it was so powerful. For one thing, it were, everybody could do it. Uh, it, it wasn't, uh, you know, man, woman, and child can practice nonviolence, and this was a concrete way of expressing that. Uh, it meant that you were building community. In fact, you were building networks of communities because you had a felt, a sensed connection between the cotton growers, the carters, the spinners, the weavers, the, the salespeople, and the customers. So it was rebuilding Indian society to start with this product that everybody could do. Uh, you could do charka every day, and that's important too because so often when we go out and have a nonviolent uh, episode, it's on a special occasion, we have to gather people together, and it sometimes is a flash in the pan. But it's like the steady humming of the wheel that was going on day and night uh, was like tolling the death knell of colonialism. So you had this continuity in social space, everybody was integrated in a network, and you had this continuity in time, which really gives us a sense of what makes nonviolent work, nonviolence work. You know, in uh, Central America, South America, they have this term firmeza permanente, which means determination, unyielding determination. And the charca was not just a symbol, but an expression of that. Uh, charca, and this is a significant aspect of constructive program, it was proactive. So in a way, it was responding to the fact that the British had uh, taken away their cloth industry. But you weren't waiting for the British to do something, you were doing it yourself. So the right formula was first make your own cloth, then burn British cloth. You see, if you ask people to throw away their British goods without having their own goods uh, to replace them, uh, it just would be impractical. It wouldn't work. So there's an interesting side note here. Was burning British cloth a form of property destruction? And I think it wasn't because it was their own property that they were destroying. You know, they were not breaking into stores and taking the British goods and throwing them out. It was, uh, well, it was kind of in between that and the Boston Tea Party. <clears throat> uh, but burning your own cloth was, uh, again, something very concrete, but extremely powerful in its symbolic resonance. Because in India, there's always been this idea of renouncing into the fire. Uh, and finally, spinning was aimed directly at the colonial system. The way the colonial system worked was the colonizer had to get in between the Indians and their natural resources, remanufacture them, send them back to them. So this will immediately put us in mind of salt and uh, of, as well as Qadar. And that leads me to my final point for this conversation. And that is, there is a gradation, and I hadn't really noticed this when I wrote Search for a Nonviolent Future, noticed it later, but there's a gradation between strictly non-confrontational constructive program and confrontational constructive program. So Charka was non-confrontational. Even burning British cloth, it was you know, a powerful statement, but it wasn't illegal. However, when it came to manufacturing salt, they escalated and went and raided the salt pans, as I'm sure you're quite familiar from the Attenborough film. 
So this shows you that there is something implicit in constructive program that is actually uh, an affront, an attack on an unjust system. And it came out in that transition from charka to salt. This is important because sometimes we think just doing something constructive is constructive program. It isn't unless it has the potential to disestablish something that's part of the obstructive system, of the oppressive system. All right, well, that's a lot to think about, and I think we've illustrated how much was involved in this simple uh, project and why Gandhi felt it was so incredibly important.